All right, today I'm covering the third section of chapter 10, focusing in on solids. So we'll describe the motion of particles. And now again, it relates to the kinetic molecular theory that we covered in the first section. And then I'm gonna talk about two types of so solids, the crystalline and the amorphous solids. Describe the different types of crystal symmetry that are can be found in solid. Oh gosh, that can be found in solids and the fine crystal structure in its uh, unit cell, specifically mostly with uh, ionic compounds. But solids, particles in solids are more closely packed. We have a lot of intermolecular forces that are highly effective. Um, so remember, intermolecular uh, forces we have you know dipole dipole London dispersion, hydrogen bonds holds these particles in very fixed positions, but vibrations are still going on. So it's not rigid, okay? They're just held there, but they can vibrate. Um, there are two types of solids. The crystalline solids means that it has crystals. Here we get a nice orderly geometric repeated pattern. And the other types of solids are called amorphous, where the particles are arranged very randomly. So properties of solids, they have a definite shape and volume. With our crystalline, a very distinct geometric shape. So table salts are always, they break off into perfect little cubes. Um, amorphous means it can maintain definite shape, but it doesn't have a distinct geometric shape. So it can be molded, kind of like glass. You can heat up glass and you can mold it into a different shape and then it cools and it's still solid. Um, rubber is the same way, um, but here you can get this nice orderly arrangement in crystalline solids, where as with the amorphous solids, not so um, distinct, okay? so. Table salt, great example of a crystalline solid. Another example of amorphous solid, cotton candy. Define melting point, or sorry, define. Solids have a definite melting point, a temperature at which it becomes a liquid. And it just means that as you increase the temperature, it is it can overcome the attractive forces holding that crystalline structure or that um, fixed position, if you will. So with a crystalline, solid there is a definite melting point a specific temperature but with amorphous there's really no definite melting point it can flow over a wide range of temperatures and i like to think especially with glass is a great example i know we didn't really get to do this in chemistry but um this is kind of where i would take out glass tubes and we would make some stirring rods or um, mold or shape these glass tubes into anything we want we're doing it with a Bunsen burner, and the temperatures can change depending on where you place it in a flame, um, but there is no definite melting point for glass, really. Another property with solids, high density and incompressibility. So high density means, you know, it's heavy. It can be heavy. It's heavier than liquids and gases. And incompressibility, you can't, you know, squish it, really. Um, low rate of diffusion, that just kind of makes sense because they're fixed in a ranged position. Um, whereas with liquids and gases, they're, they flow or glide, and so diffusion is a lot easier. But with here with solids, because they're in fixed positions, it's a, low, a lower rate. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about crystalline solids a little bit more in depth. So crystalline solids have a crystal structure. That just means a 3D arrangement of particles in a crystal, and you can kind of see there's lots of different ways that could occur. Maybe in earth science we might have covered some of these, um, but the arrangement is represented by a lattice or a lattice. And a unit cell is the smallest possible portion of that crystal lattice structure that shows that 3D pattern. So here is my um, crystal structure, the lattice. But if I just take out the smallest portion that um, shows this 3D pattern, that would be my unit cell. Now, what holds the the crystal what holds the crystal structure together? Could be multiple different binding forces here. So the first one, ionic crystals where it's held together by opposite charges, positive and negative. These guys tend to be hard, brittle, they have high melting points. And then your book mentions good insulators, and I was kind of, you know, curious about why they said that. Um, so I just put a question mark. The book says they're good insulators. I'm like, okay. Covalent network crystals, hard, brittle, high melting point, but they are non-conductors or semiconductors. So I have a diagram on the next slide that shows covalent network crystals. Metallic crystals, if you remember from metallic bonds, the sea of electrons, how the electrons are not held by a single nucleus, they flow from one nucleus to the other, and as a result, you get high electrical conductivity with it. The fourth binding force that could be found in a crystal is the covalent molecular crystal, basically intermolecular forces, very low melting points, easily vaporized, soft, and also considered insulators. So here is our ionic bonding, where we have opposite charges holding the crystal structure together. 
Here, we labeled it as covalent network crystals. So covalent bondings, how they share electrons. Here's my metallic bonding with the sea of electrons or free electrons floating from one atom to the next. And then the fourth one we classified as covalent molecular crystals. So not a network, um, individually, if you will. Um, we're here, we're, we're seeing some H-bonds, okay? Uh, dipole, dipole, London dispersion. So this is covalent bonds. This would be like individual, breaking it down. Now amorphous solids, amorphous means without shape. Uh, they are not arranged in a regular pattern, glass, plastics, rubber, cotton candy, but they do serve a very important application in electronics, especially as semiconductors. Okay, so that does it for section 10.3 solids. And I just went through all of these. Um, so remember that, you know, I hope you handed in your 10.1, 10.2 worksheet. You have an assignment, a 10.3 worksheet that's tied to, to a 10.4. So you should at least start the 10.3 side. And on Monday, we'll cover 10.4, um, which I believe is titled, let me look, Changes of States.